Hey you, welcome back to my channel. I am Sephira Nava and today we're going to do another episode of Nava Awakening. So in today's episode, I am going to reference a wonderful book that I discovered almost six years ago now. And it is The Untethered Soul, A Journey Beyond Yourself by Michael A. Singer. And if you followed my blogs, you have definitely heard about me referencing this book and Tavira in the Books, um, a little section category on my blog where I talk about wonderful books that I love to read, um, especially for like inspirational, self-improvement, self-awareness, all that journey of connecting to who you truly are. So on this episode, we're going to go into a chapter of this book and it is called Removing Your Inner Thorn. So... If you're interested about this book, if you ever wondered about it and you heard about it and you want to get a little bit of insight on it, please keep watching. Okay, so I am definitely literally going to be reading some of the paragraphs and passages out of this book. So I definitely will be looking down and reading and then I will kind of be discussing my thoughts and my feelings and where I am as far as, as far as, you know, what this chapter is about and how I applied it to my life. Okay, so let's get started. So the spiritual journey is one of constant transformation. In order to grow, you must give up the struggle to remain the same and learn to embrace change at all times. One of the most important areas requiring change is how we solve our personal problems. We normally attempt to solve our inner disturbances by protecting ourselves. Real transformation begins when you embrace your problems as agents of growth. In order to understand how the process works, let's examine the following situation. All right. Imagine that you have a thorn in your arm that directly touches a nerve. When the thorn is touched, it is very painful. Because it hurts so much, the thorn is a serious problem. It's difficult to sleep because you roll over on it. It's hard to get close to people because they might touch it. It makes your daily life very difficult. You can't even go for a walk in the woods because you might brush the thorn against the branches. This thorn is a constant source of disturbance, and to solve the problem, you only have two choices. The first choice is to look at your situation and decide that since it's so disturbing when things touch the thorn, you need to make sure nothing touches it. The second choice is to decide that since it's so disturbing when things touch the thorn, you need to just take it out. Believe it or not, the effects of the choice you make will determine the course of the rest of your life. This is one of the core level structural decisions that lay the foundation for your future. Wow. So, in this book, he definitely uses a thorn as kind of like an analogy um, and a, an example, plain devil's advocate type of situation for your life and the journey of self-discovery beyond ourselves and so definitely a thorn could be anything that's like a serious pet peeve it could be something where you are triggered by something be it in a relationship at work tv music you know just a real emotional psychological trauma sometimes uh, trigger for you that is what this thorn represents so um, sometimes even just reading about triggers and thorns and situations you know we are already kind of shut down unconsciously sometimes we're like I don't even just want to even go there we roll our eyes be it internally or externally and there's a part of us like he says that just kind of just the self-defense the, the, the um, protective mechanisms pop up and he's definitely about facing those, obliterating those, understanding what they can really do for you and what it's really about. So we're going to delve more into that as we go forward. Yeah. 
Okay, so, so I am definitely literally going to be reading. Let's begin with the first choice and explore how it will affect your life. Again, if you decide you have to keep things from touching the thorn, then that becomes the work of a lifetime. If you want to go for a walk in the woods, you'll have to thin out the branches to make sure it doesn't brush against them. Since you often roll over and touch the thorn when you're sleeping, you'll have to find a solution as well when it comes to your bedtime. Perhaps you could design an apparatus that acts as a protective, a protective device. If you really put a lot of energy into it and your solution seemed to work, you would think that you have solved your problem. But that may not necessarily be the case. You would think, you say, I can sleep now. And guess what? I got to go to TV to get a testimony. And nobody who has the thorn problem can get my protective device. And I even get paid. This is something I can get paid for royalties. So now you've got a whole life built around this thorn you're proud of. You kept the wood thinned out and you wear this apparatus to bed. But now you have a new problem. You fell in love. This is a problem because in your situation, it's hard to even get a hug. Remember, that thorn is still there. Nobody can touch you because they might touch the thorn. So you design another kind of device that allows closeness amongst people without actually touching. Eventually you decide you want total mobility without having to worry about the thorn anymore. So you make a full-time device that doesn't have to be unstrapped at night or changed over hugging and other daily activities. But it's heavy, so you put wheels on it control it with hydraulics and install collision sensors. It's actually quite an impressive device. Mm. Of course you had to change the doors in the house so that you can get your protective device in. But at least now you can live your life. You can go to work, you can go to sleep, you can get close to people. So you announce to everyone, I have solved my problem. I am free being I can go anywhere I want, and I can do anything I want. This thorn used to run my life. Now, it doesn't run anything. But aha, the truth is the thorn completely runs your entire life. It really does. It affects all your decisions, including where you go, whom you're comfortable with, and who's comfortable with you. It determines where you're allowed to work, what house you can live in, and what kind of bed you can sleep on at night. When it's all said and done, the thorn is running every aspect of your life. It turns out that the life of protecting yourself from your problem becomes a perfect reflection of the problem itself. It didn't solve anything. If you don't solve the root cause of this problem, what are you doing? But instead, attempt to protect yourself from the problem. It ends up running your life. You end up psychologically fixated on the problem that you cannot see the forest for the trees. You actually feel that because you minimize this pain of a problem with all these apparatuses and inventions that you've solved your problem. But in fact, the thorn is still there. You're just doing things to help the problem seem to not exist. All you did was devote your life to avoiding it. It is now the center of the universe. It's all there is. So how can you apply this analogy in your life? There's many ways. Let's talk about it. So, yeah. okay, so let's go. With what issue says, in my life, because I share, I'm unveiling Nava and I reveal personal things. 
I want to say what is a thing that I probably just try to you know mask over or use like little um, tactics to not address the issue when it came to something so one thing that I definitely realized with me that I was kind of like a self-sabotager when it came to relationships more with dating and my issue was more of the intimacy part of it and intimacy doesn't mean necessarily sexual but it just means any type of physical kind of contact so the thorn reference definitely was like very dead on in a sense of me referencing of touching because I definitely attracted guys that loved being physical with me. Their their love language was touch. They loved to hold me. Um, they loved to hold my hand. They loved to lay with me and even like take pictures and stuff like that. And so that was definitely something that I um, kind of shied away from. And it was a definitely a deeper issue and that's what he was talking about the root issue and one of my main root issues that I realized was for me was just basically self-love self-confidence in myself um, I definitely didn't feel comfortable in my own skin my physical body my skin itself was just going through a lot of changes and there was this thing because I didn't feel I looked my best and I didn't feel comfortable there was this part of me unconsciously that couldn't understand how they were kind of attracted to me, could feel so comfortable holding me and touching me and things like that. So I definitely was that girl that kind of like squirmed and moved and found ways to be physical as I could without being so physical so that they wouldn't touch that thorn part of me something that would trigger that whatever it was and I don't know if it was pain or anything it may not literally be pain you may think oh I'm not in pain but it could be in it could be insecurity it could be uncomfortableness it could be a vulnerability and definitely vulnerability was high up there for me um, it was a level of being very like just there and raw like they were trying to just get a little too close in a more intimate deeper vulnerable way that I just wasn't ready because I wasn't even that vulnerable and deep with myself to really love myself so I definitely tried to dress certain ways so they wouldn't want to touch me I definitely when it came to certain um, type of dates or situations I would make up excuses why I couldn't be around and even when it just came down to you know kissing and something like that I could only hugging or anything like that I could only go so far um, and that's why I definitely was later on the getting intimate list and it takes so long with a lot of my relationships in the past but I thought I kind of fixed it by doing a lot of other things for them and be it cooking and being supportive and they love that they valued that but what they really wanted more from me is something I couldn't give them but I thought my forms of apparatus and devices to sleep better and all of that was doing those things cooking being there for them um, becoming more of a worthy woman as far as um, the things that I was doing with my career and life and they still just wanted to be able to hold and touch me and at the end that's what kind of uh, kept the relationship from really thriving so it's definitely like he said you know in essence it controlled my life you know and the issue was still there and eventually it came out you know that that was the issue and no matter what I did that I thought would kind of make them forget or not focus on it that was still definitely an issue so this is something that I have tried option one to work around it and keep the thorn there but let's get ready to delve into option two and trying to remove that thorn so okay. Alright, what so, issue it turns out in my that the life of protecting yourself from the problem becomes a perfect reflection of the problem itself? So now, let's go further. In order to apply this analogy of the thorn to your whole life, we will use loneliness as an example. Let's say you have a very deep sense of inner loneliness. It's so deep that you have trouble sleeping at night, and during the day, it makes you very, very sensitive. You, susceptibly to your feelings, sharpen pains in your heart that cause quite a disturbance. 
you have trouble staying focused at your job, and you have trouble with everyday interactions. What's more, when you're very lonely, it's often painfully difficult to get close to people. You see, loneliness is just like the thorn. It causes pain and disturbance in your aspects of life. But in the case of the human heart, we have more than one thorn. We have sensitivities about loneliness, rejection, about our physical appearance, and about our mental proudness. We are walking around with lots of different forms of thorns. Multiples, in fact. Yes, but one person. At any moment, something can touch them, trigger them, cause some type of reaction and pain inside. And you have two choices with these inner thorns, as you did with the thorn in your arm. Surely it's obvious that you would have been much better off taking out that thorn. There's no reason to spend your life protecting the thorn from getting touched when you can just remove it. Once the thorn is removed, you are truly free of it. The same is true with your inner thorns. They can be removed. But if you choose to keep them without becoming disturbed by them, you must modify your life to avoid the situations that will stir them up, trigger them, touch them, cause an irritation and reaction. If you're lonely, you must avoid going to places where couples tend to be. That's a trigger. Watching these romantic movies, singing these songs, all of these touch and trigger thorn. If you are afraid of rejection, well, you must avoid getting too close to people. If you do this, however, it is for the same reason that you thinned out the woods. You are attempting to adjust your life to make allowances for the thorns. They are going to control and run it. In the early example, the thorns were outside. Now, they are inside. Like, you know, self-love self-worthiness issues, feeling capable, feeling somebody can love you and you're worthy. Notice that you aren't asking how to get rid of the problem. You are asking how to protect yourself from feeling anything. You did this either by avoiding situations or by using people, places, things as protective shields, substances, alcohol, going out, even sex, you're going to end up just like the person with the thorn. The loneliness will ruin your life. You'll marry the person who makes you feel less lonely. And you'll think that, oh, it's natural, it's normal, I've been fixed again. But exactly the same as the person who is avoiding the pain of the thorn instead of taking it out, you have not removed the root of the loneliness. And at some point, it will rear its ugly head. It will come out. If you do not remove the thorn, you will end up responsible for both the thorn and everything you pulled around yourself in an attempt to avoid it, or every decision and action you made to attempt to avoid it. Should you be fortunate enough to find someone who manages to diminish the feelings of loneliness, you would then begin to worry about keeping your relationship with the person. You manage to compound the issue by avoiding the problem. This is exactly the same as using an apparatus to compensate for the thorn. You have to adjust your life accordingly. The minute you allow the core problem to stay, it expands out into multiple problems. Then it becomes layer on top of layer on top of layer. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so, as I said before, you know, in my relationships, as I said, when you get someone and it may feel the loneliness, you're doing things, be it sex, alcohol, you're doing other things to compensate, you know, your form of your apparatus. And that's something that I did, but it only can work for so long, especially if that person is desiring a certain level of connection with you or something that triggers your thorn for whatever the issue is. And we can't run to people, substances, jobs, and situations and really think that we've been fixed. It's very much not true. If anything, we're adding to that thorn, we're adding another layer, or we're actually forming a whole nother thorn in itself to add to what we're already doing. And that's something that is just really not healthy. It's just another form of sweeping things up under the rug, acting like they don't exist. 
and at some point things reach a, a pressure point you know it's like a volcano eventually it builds up and it will erupt in one way or another and that's when you have these kind of snap moments you know you just binge you just um, some people commit suicide it can just really 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 get detrimental if you don't address these thorns and these roots and these triggers of what it is and we probably can't always do that our kind of go-to response is going to the person if it really is a person or a situation or a school sometimes we don't have that that um, luxury to do that and it could be just simply addressing in ourselves and we're definitely going to talk about those forms later um, but we're going to talk about just the fact that you have these options it's usually two it's just try to act like it doesn't exist and do things to compensate around it or really trying to go to the root of the situation and really remove it so that you can truly in fact be free and it actually can be even a motivation a catalyst for you to have this wonderful wonderful life be the rose from concrete or be what I like to say that lotus that thrives in the mud of it um, take all the nutrients that you can and you can become a lotus from it and not just just let that thorn sit there and fester inside of you so how do you free yourself let's get into that okay so how do we free ourselves yes how do you free yourself in the deepest sense you free yourself by finding yourself you are not the pain you feel nor are you the part that periodically stresses out. None of these disturbances have anything to do with you. You are the one who notices things. You are not these emotions. You are not truly these thoughts. You can be and you can free yourself. To free yourself from your inner thorns, you simply stop playing with them. The more you touch them, the more you irritate them, because you're always doing something to avoid the feeling of it. They are not given the chance to naturally work themselves out. If you want, you can simply permit disturbances to come up and let it flow. Let it see what it reveals yourself and address it as such. You can just let them flow and go and release. You don't have to hold them to you as a true identity of who you are. This is why I am. Since your inner thorns are simply blocked energies from the past, they can be released. The problem is you either completely avoid situations that will cause them to be released or you push them back down in the same protective mode, same protective responses, same protective response. Suppose you're sitting at home and watching TV and you're enjoying the program until two main characters fall in love. Uh oh. Suddenly you feel loneliness. There's no one around to give you affection. There's a trigger. Interestingly, you were fine just a few minutes ago. This example shows that the thorn is always in your heart. It's just not activated until something touches it. Trigger. You feel the reaction as a hollowness or a dropping sensation in your heart. Store energy from the plants, releases from the heart, and generates thoughts after that. Stored energy from the past releases this energy and feelings and thoughts follow after that. Now instead of enjoying TV, you're sitting alone, caught in a wave of thoughts and emotions. You're all up in your feelings. What can you do to solve this besides eating something, calling somebody, drinking something, doing something, going out at night, having sex, whatever it is that you do to cope with it? What you can do is notice that you notice this. I am feeling this way. Acknowledge it. It's real. It's there. It exists. You can notice that your consciousness was watching TV and now it is watching your inner mellow drama. Now, this is not really me who's feeling this way. This is my human self having a human experience feeling this. Try to separate yourself. 
you are looking at is an object. A feeling of emptiness is an object. It is something you just simply feel. But who feels it? Your way out is to just notice it, just to recognize it. I feel lonely. I feel what we call angry. I feel what we call sad. But it's not who I am. The one who notices it is already free. Especially if you know it's not truly who you are and doesn't have to run your life. If you want to be free of these energies, you must allow them to pass through you instead of hiding them, ignoring them, covering them up. Ever since you were a child, you've had energies going on inside of you. Wake up and realize that you are there and you have a sensitive person inside. Simply watch the sensitive parts of you and feel the disturbance. Try to recognize it and try to know what triggered it. See if you feel jealous, needy, or fear, anger, or sadness, unworthiness. These feelings are just a part of nature of a human being experience, but they're not a part of your true being experience. If you pay attention, you will see they are not you. They are just something you're feeling. You are the indwelling being that is aware of all of this. If you maintain your center and can learn to appreciate and respect even this difficult experience. So let's talk about what that means if you don't know. And I will tell you what it means to me. Okay, so what this means to me. I truly believe that the saying that you might have heard is that we are in fact entities, energy, spirit beings having a human experience. That this physical vessel here is not truly who we are, but it's just something that we're using while we're here on earth. And that these so-called feelings and emotions and that thoughts that we have are simply a part of this vessel but it's not attached to who we are because we are surpassed the mundaneness of it all mundane life the things that we have to do quote unquote on this earth is not truly what we are and who we are and what we have to do in our real spiritual entity energy self so we are not sad we are not angry we are not worthless we are not you know, all these negative things that we use to label and recognize feelings and thoughts and emotions and people and situations on earth. We are surpassed that. We're above that. We are powerful. We are all knowing. We are health and reasoning, as we would say here on earth. So it takes a moment to kind of construct and change the mind of thinking of that and reach that level of confidence consciousness within yourself to realize I am not this I am separate from this and so it's a moment where you may say okay when I finally try to address the issues especially kind of with the self-sabotaging thing in my relationships and understanding that my self-love and self-worthiness and not feeling comfortable in my own skin was a huge issue for my relationships when I felt those triggering emotions I had to acknowledge them like you said I had to realize them and address them and let them flow through me and feel them and not hide them anymore and I had to do it alone not being in a relationship with somebody I had to really take some I did take a few years of not really being intimate you know I may hang out a little bit but trying to really develop something with somebody I didn't want to do that same cycle again so if I did watch TV or see my friends or something and it did trigger that sense of wow you know I had somebody that wanted to marry me to have kids with me but because of my own sense of self-worthiness that's not who I really am because I couldn't love the skin that I was in and the changes and embrace it and find a way to um, work through that I self-sabotage that or the relationship couldn't flow and we're not going to talk about them and how they could have handled my issue my personal thorns this is just addressing me right now because those were my thorns and myself having this human experience they have their own thorns so we're gonna not talk about them we're talking about you we're talking about me so it was just okay when do I feel this why do I feel this 
what can I do to change this? You know, why am I always triggered like this? And so I had to really try to find ways of thinking sometimes of where did it start it. Um, well, if I clear it up, so going through like having acne and flare ups and things like that, you know, I had to think to myself, if my skin did clear up, will I feel better? I wouldn't know until it happened. Well, my skin has cleared up. It's nothing like it used to be in my 20s. But even when I worked on that and finally got to place clearing up, I realized I still was having those triggering issues. And then my body. My body was definitely maturing. I was a late bloomer. The breasts started coming in a lot more. Um, my thickness started coming in a lot more. And now I was readjusting to all of that. And that was adding to my self physical inward issues. And it's like, well, if I try to learn to embrace this new womanly body thickness and trying to be healthy with it, will it fix it? Well, I start to kind of work with it. But when it came to me being in those relationships and a guy wanted to be a level of intimacy with me, be a touch holding hands again, I still was finding myself being triggered. So it was something deeper than just a physical issue for me. Um, these guys felt that I was very sexy and pretty and only felt that within myself to an extent. I had to really address this inner issue that was going on with myself. I had to love myself. And so that was the issue of journey of finding out how to do that. And it was really realizing, fair this body doesn't really represent you. Like, and you felt that, I always felt that. Like, I don't feel like I'm expressing my real self in this body. And I had to realize because that's my truth. I would never 100% feel like I'm truly expressing what I really am in this physical body. I don't care what kind of surgery, plexus surgery I have, wigs, protective styling, clothes, workouts I do. I don't care what I do to this physical body. I will never 100% feel like I'm truly being represented on how I really, really feel. And that is my true self. I feel powerful. I feel beautiful i feel what we call beautiful here on earth but i feel powerful i feel worthy i feel elegant i feel queen i feel goddess i feel divinity i feel all of that and i only can express that but so much through this physical body by why what i wear how my hair looks how i smell and all of that and i had to just come to terms with that that was like the real big rainy issue for me so when I finally came to that understanding, it kind of freed me. It kind of freed me. My self was tapped into my higher self and I wasn't recognizing that. And I was letting my natural physical self be my truth. That I am my acne, I am my weight, I am my breasts, I am my hair, I am all that. And I am none of that. And so when I finally realized that, that this is just a temporary representation of who I am, someone can see the real me someone i would meant would know and understand that i believe as i believe and see as i see and they will see the same and that's what will connect us and then at the same time honor this as now i am honoring this and treasuring this experience as i am treasuring it and now we are equally yoked of like mind and soul and body and now this experience will be totally different and a lot better and that's what I'm looking forward to and understanding. And that's what I had to do to kind of get through it and overcome it. Hey guys, okay. sorry about that. So what so this means to me, I truly believe. My has changed drastically. So I'm trying to like work <laughs> on bringing my light. So if you see it get a little dark and you know everything change up, I apologize for that. So yeah, I told you my story. Let's wrap this up. Okay. The more you sit in self, the more you will begin to feel an energy that you have experienced before, that you have never experienced before. It comes up from behind rather than in front where you experience your mind and emotions when you no longer absorb in your melodrama of it all, but instead sit comfortably deep inside the seat of awareness and you will start to feel this flow of energy coming up from deep inside. This flow has been called Shakati. I think I'm pronouncing that right. This flow has been called spirit. 
This flow has been called to some inner goddess. This is what you begin to experience if you hang out with self instead of hanging out with those fleshly, humane inner disturbances and those thorns. You don't have to get rid of loneliness. You just ease to be involved with it, to understand you are not me, not truly. I recognize you, I see you, I understand that you are there, I address you, but more powerful, I know that you are not me. You don't have to get rid of loneliness. It's just another thing in the universe, like cars, grass, and the stars. It's none of your business because it's truly not you. Awareness is simply aware while everything in the universe parades before it. If you sit with the self, you experience the strength of your inner being even when your heart feels weak. This is the essence of the path. This is the essence of spiritual life. Once you learn that it's okay to feel inner disturbances and that they can no longer disturb your seat of consciousness, you will be free when you recognize they do not tell you who you truly are. You have taste ecstasy of the inner flow and you can walk in this world and the world will never touch you. That's how you can become free and transcend to your true self. Hey guys, sorry about that. I'm okay, back. you guys, I, I hope you enjoyed that video. And, and I will continue to take more chapters from this book as I continue my own self journey of connecting with my true self beyond the physical realm. And I definitely will have this book link down in the description box below for you guys so that you can get it read it and maybe you can um, join me in the next video I thank you so much for watching I hope you guys are safe and trying to enjoy life as best as possible considering the circumstances please 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 like share and subscribe hit the notification bell so you'll know next time I upload my videos follow my blog which also will be down to down in the description lines below and let me know what books are good for you as you continue to connect to your true higher self your inner being going through all your emotional psychological mental and spiritual works i would love to know what techniques you're using to remove your thorns and what books works for you and i love you so much namaskar and i will see you guys in my next video bye